sang together in that plain little church with the branches all worn. How dear to my heart, how precious the moment we stood shaking hands and singing our song. We stood shaking hands and singing our song. all songs here today that were written by women in bluegrass. Um, the only one that I'm not 100% sure of uh, is that first one there, um, The River of Jordan. It was collected by A.P. Carter, so it's really, it's really impossible to know who wrote it, who contributed it, um, or maybe somebody knows, but I sure don't. So yeah, I, I think these are these are black gospel tunes that existed up in the mountains, and probably could be found in a you know an old hymnal from the 1700s somewhere. There was a, a guy named Leslie Riddle, who was a mixed race guy from the Knoxville area, and I believe he accompanied A. P. Carter on a lot of song finding trips. He was the medium for A.P. Carter's song hunting expeditions. A.P. didn't really write most of those songs. He arranged them based on what uh, he and Leslie Riddle uncovered up in the hills there in the black communities. It was mostly black communities that kept uh, a lot of those songs together. Hazel Dickens came from the coal mining world. There was a huge movement in America for the union and the coal miners union to have kind of a bargaining power with the owners of the coal mining. But Hazel was the inheritor of the kind of union and coal mining songs that came from Sarah Ogan Gunning, the organizing song. So Hazel Dickens inherited this sort of really strong feminine backbone to moral uh, meaning in things. And that's, I think, the strength of her songs comes from a lot from standing up for the poor coal miner's side of life and her own uh, looking into her own family relationships with her mother and her grandmother. And so, yeah, Hazel's songs, you know, they were the real life songs, yeah. Words from Peter Rowan. Thank you for, for giving us some words about Hazel. Um, feels good to be honoring the women of bluegrass. And you know, a lot of these songs I didn't even know were written by a woman in bluegrass. Mm -hmm. Like this next one uh, is a song called I Only Exist. It's a standard in the picking circles. And it was written by um, it was written by Jimmy Stanley and Joyce Morris. So Ralph Stanley's wife and one of her friends, I imagine. And if any of you know it, any more stories about this song or when it was written, what was going on, or uh, any stories about Jimmy and Joyce, and you want to send them our way, we'd be really glad to receive any of those stories. Without further ado, here's I Only Exist. Yeah. 
I, I don't know much about Ola Bell, but she was okay. on the radio, which was a great resource for us young bluegrass enthusiasts in the 60s. When we'd get down to Pennsylvania area, we'd always hear them on the radio. And I believe what, they were on one show that I played at Sunset Park with Bill Monroe, Ola Bell Reed. And, of, of course, you know, after a while, you would run into them, even at IBMA. I think they, they may have come up there in the beginning. such a pleasure playing for you um, from we're all living here in Nashville Tennessee over here on the fiddle that's Phoebe Hunt and here on the mandolin and the banjo that's Mimi Naja and my name is Lindsay Lou and um, yes yeah, so nice to play you all these songs that were written by women in the scene uh, we're gonna play this old bell Reed song and then leave you with uh, Rosalie Watson the wife of Doc Watson uh, one that she wrote called Long Journey thanks for tuning in
keep of the happy ways that on earth we try. And when I come, we will walk hand in hand as one in heaven in the family of God. Oh, my God. Hair check. Okay. You ain't got no hair no more. Yeah. I, I do actually have a lot of hair right you now. You got hair. It's Pretty growing back. back. So fast. Uh -huh. I really like this like mom mullet action that's happening Mom right mullet. Now. It's kind of 80s like retro.